Oh, Jacob asked about the video project. Oh, um, yes, he did. It. <laughs> so, I do have, um, after class, if any of you want uh, a copy of the syllabus, I've got a few extras if you didn't get one when we started or whatever, but, or if you just want an extra. And I got four and I don't, I don't need to hang on to them, so I'll just throw that out to you. Um, so the video project is kind of a fun thing. Nothing too difficult. So you need to come up with Students will demonstrate their understanding of an economic concept discussed in class through the creation of a visual representation of the concept. You can go solo or create groups of no more than three students. Then each group should perform the following tasks. Do the concept or idea from class. Uh, that's just a restatement. Create a video clip to demonstrate this. The video should be based on the student's understanding of it. The length should be two to four minutes. So minimum of two, maximum of four. And then we'll try to get these presented in class. Um, I'm hoping we'll have enough time to look at some of those, but we can otherwise share them that you can watch them on your own time. And so the due date uh, is blank. And be creative and have fun. That's the most important part. If I don't laugh, you will not get an A. Let's just put it that way. I just didn't put that out there quite that way. But I want you to have fun with it. So you can have kind of a, um, you know, you can act out something. I've had students sing, play guitar, uh, act something out. Uh, we got lots of fun topics that we've done with the uh, financial crisis. You can draw something from here. You can draw something from the Skousen book if you want. Uh, Wall Street versus Main Street. The sky's the limit. So maximum of three students, but you can do it solo too. So any questions on the on the video project? When's it due? When's it due? I was waiting for that one. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Yeah, Jacob wanted to get a start on it uh, this weekend, so that's part of why he asked. So you can obviously work on it early and submit it early. Um, but uh, next Wednesday night. Midnight. Yeah. I'm just saying last semester, so I was the video that I made for your class. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was yours again? I, I've had so many favorites. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yes, yeah, so you can be creative and have fun. Um, let the juices flow. Uh, if you do a group, if there's two of you or three of you, each person needs to show their face somewhere in the video. It's like not one person's the camera person. So make sure you work everybody into the video in some capacity. That's the other constraint for, for people who do groups. And you can bring other people in if you have your roommate or somebody else, if you need some additional actors, uh, whatever. You can be creative that way. All right, any questions? So that is Wednesday. All right, so our last thing to wrap up this material for the weekend is the appendix. So the chapter 20 appendix is also uh, part of our covered materials. And all it is is a, an application of purchasing power parity to interest rates. So it's called interest rate parity. It's about just three pages long. And I'm going to walk you through most of it now. Um, so interest rate parity. What was purchasing power parity? Okay, that's what we predict in here, right? So the cost of a good or a basket of goods um, should be relatively the same after we adjust the exchange rate. In other words, the exchange rate is the thing that's going to equalize the prices between countries. So the price of a Big Mac in Kansas is five dollars and sixty-six cents. The price of a Big Mac in Missouri is five dollars and sixty-six cents, right? We're right across the border. So now if Missouri all of a sudden developed their own currency and that currency traded at 105 uh, tiger dollars, tigers, tiger dollars to American dollars, then there'd be an exchange rate of 105 for one 
and then all of a sudden the Big Mac would be 105 times 566. So we're talking about uh, 566 Titan dollars is what the Missouri one costs. But after we adjust for the exchange rate, they're the same. That's what purchasing power very says that exchange rates are going to adjust such that uh, similar or identical goods uh, will be priced effectively the same. Interest rates are going, uh, or exchange rates rather, are going to adjust. So now interest rates is kind of similar. So chapter 20 appendix. Chapter 20 appendix. So interest rate parity. So IRP is similar to PPP. Uh, except that it uses interest rates. Except that it uses interest rates. So, example. Let's look at dollars, American dollars. So, American dollars. Use the symbol D for this exercise and euros. So kind of do a little a C with a dash in there. Okay, so what does it mean to have dollar appreciation? Dollars will be worth more. All right, dollars worth more. So the dollar appreciation means that. The exchange rate in time period T plus one uh, is greater than the exchange rate in time period T divided by the exchange rate in time period T. Right? Rate of change. The dollar, it used to be 105 minus 100 divided by 100, whatever. So we're just doing the rate of change of that. And now we can kind of think about uh, thinking of this X ante. So what is the expected appreciation rate? We know today that the euro to dollar exchange rate is this. We think tomorrow it's going to be that. So it's kind of similar to what we did with the Fisher formula, where we had expected inflation and we had the expected real rate of return. We're just thinking now ex ante before the fact I know what the exchange rate is today. I don't know what it's going to be tomorrow, but I can form an expectation about what I think it's going to be tomorrow. All right, and so just to be clear here, uh, let's just put where, this is the same as the book notation here, is where ET equals the euro on top per dollar. So how many euros per dollar is what ET is? All right, so um, for the German, so let's say a German investor is looking for a good investment. And so we can think of the return, the return that they're going to get of dollar assets. How are we going to figure out the return on their dollar assets? So we're going to call that RD. And by the way, I'm, I'm following the textbook notation. If you guys keep back in your notes, your homework, or whatever. So this is the return of dollar assets is R superscript D. All right, what is it going to be? Well, the interest rate that I get in my dollar denominated financial asset is ID. So that's the interest rate that I'm getting from the dollar denominated asset. Plus a little bonus if there was some appreciation of the dollar. Remember, I'm a German now. So I'm a, I'm a German national. I pay my house payment in euros. So dollars really don't mean anything to me. It's not money in my country, it's just an investment. So now I have two parts to my investment. 
I've got my American asset that's generating this interest rate, and then the dollar is going to appreciate or depreciate. So we have a plus sign here. So if it depreciated, of course, that would automatically make that go down. But that's my uh, return denominated in dollars. So I can do that, or, or I buy a, a euro denominated. So or just do a euro denominated investment and earn I F. And the F here is the foreign. So this is the foreign rate. We're kind of thinking dollars versus foreign. So the F here is just the foreign rate or the euro rate. Again, I'm just following the way your textbook did it. They wanted to keep it general. Yep. I don't mean to backtrack, but if you, you said something about if it depreciates in the top one, yeah. what happens if it's depreciation of the negative number? It would be a negative number. Yeah. So the appreciation is really depreciation. So if I stick in here a, uh, a 3%, it's I got a 6% return on my investment plus appreciation of 3%. 6 plus 3 is 9. If the appreciation was really depreciation, the appreciation is negative. 6 minus 3 is Okay, anything else there? Okay, so what is my relative demand? The relative demand, which is RD, relative demand is the difference between the two. So that's equal to the interest rate that I'll get from the dollar minus the interest rate that I'll get that I would be expecting to get from a euro denominated asset. So we kind of looked at this before, the different the interest rate differential, right? So the, how does the American asset look compared to the foreign asset? And now because we're in the foreign exchange chapter, we just add in the dollar appreciation factor. We expect appreciation. So all I did is I took uh, this number minus this number, and then I just threw the appreciation at the end. So it's one minus the other. It's the relative domain. All right, questions there? Gonna do the same thing now for the American. So for the American investor, for the American, we can look at the return on the foreign investment. So the return on the foreign investment in terms of dollars, in terms of dollars, equals the interest rate that I get from the foreign investment minus any dollar appreciation that I'm expecting. Remember for the American, if the dollar appreciates, it hurts them, right? Yep. So we're gonna be subtracting. If the dollar depreciated, then we're back to kind of what uh, Daniel was talking about. If this is six and this is three, if the dollar appreciated, that hurt us, so it's three, but if it was a depreciation, it'd be a negative three, Minus the minus equals a plus, I would earn 9%. Then it worked to my benefit by investing in the uh, foreign asset. All right, or, or just do the American investment. Uh, I B, do an investment in appreciated dollars. So then the relative demand for the American is the dollar investment minus, and I'm going to put this in brackets just to kind of show the one step, minus the dollar appreciation. So all I'm doing is I took this term and this term, it's the dollar denominated minus this thing up here is the relative demand. And then we can kind of rewrite that. We got minus a minus 
So we get the dollar interest rate minus the foreign interest rate. There's our difference again. And then a minus the minus is the plus the dollar appreciation. Now, how do these two equations compare for the German versus the American? If we're paying attention here. Look at this one, look at this one. They're the same, right? So the, the calculus, if you will, of whether you should go foreign or domestic is the same. So the relative demand, the relative demand is the same for the German or the American. Okay, so that's fine. Both of these two are thinking the same thing. They just have to convert it back uh, to their home country at the end. But the relative demand is the same for both the German and the American. So with capital mobility, kind of where we started off with here, investors Roam the globe. It's a little bit of rust of color here. Roam the globe with that equation. And therefore, market discipline will take away any profit opportunities. Market discipline will yield. This for the American. What I expect to get for dollar assets is equal to any equilibrium. I'd expect that to be equal to what I get on foreign assets minus this appreciation figure, which this time I'm going to write it out for reasons you'll see in terms of the way we started off with. The dollar appreciation figure is that. Which is just the t plus one minus the t divided by or divided by e. So why did we do that? Well, with a little gymnastics, you can solve this for e t. So you can do it on your own if you want. We're running a little low on time, so we still got enough time for me to get where I want to be. But notice, like this e t goes with this one, so this one would be over this one. And this turns into a one. Right. And then you can just solve for ET. Here's the answer that you get if you do it. The exchange rate is equal to the expected exchange rate in T time period T plus one over the foreign interest rate minus the domestic interest rate or the dollar interest rate plus one. All right, now we have kind of a neat little tool that'll allow us to make some predictions. If foreign interest rates go up, if foreign interest rates go up, dollar denominated or uh, foreign denominated interest rates go up, what happens? Appreciation or depreciation? Depreciation. If domestic interest rates go up, appreciation. So now we have a predictor that ties us back to interest rates here. So an increase in interest rates on foreigners leads to depreciation of the dollar. Dollar depreciation. And an interest rate, an increase in the dollar denominated interest rates leads to appreciation. This connection, we can start to have a little bit of fun of what do you think is going to happen to interest rates with the Fed doing COVID related stuff? Are interest rates going to tend to go up or down? Up. So now you can start to make some predictions. What's going to happen to the dollar? Appreciation. So now you can start making your Forex trades right now 
before it hits, you can go make millions. All right, I'm not advising that you do that, by the way. You guys are better than that. All right, I'll see you Monday.